Among Us leapt right into our hearts right when we needed it the most this year. Although it came out a few years back, it certainly exploded in popularity this year, overtaking essentially every game out there for a while. And that's pretty cool considering this was a game made by a small development team. When the internet as a whole grabs hold of a game, ultimately we become obsessed with every aspect of it. Among Us is both rewarding because it makes us laugh, but also because it takes some serious strategy and manipulation to come out on top. But outside the scope of gameplay, there's been a lot of neat things people have discovered. From stealing the medbay animation, to turning themselves invisible, and a lot more. But of all the easter eggs and discoveries made in the game so far, there is one that remains unsolved. A mystery that every player has probably encountered, but one that most players simply overlook. And that is the hidden audio message in Among Us. And hey, if you like trying to solve mysteries in games, I recommend checking out my new game, Zardy's Maze. It's completely free, challenging, and there's plenty hidden in the dark. But anyways, strap on your detective hats because we have a lot to cover. Tackling secrets in indie games is not really new to me. Heck, although I mainly focus on Nintendo titles, indie games have always been a guilty pleasure of mine. Figuring out their secrets collectively with other fans over the web has always been an enjoyable pastime. I remember flipping my lid when people discovered you could enter a phone number into the wall and find us at Freddy's 3. I was on the edge of my seat. Fast forward to today, and being an indie developer myself for a spooky challenge game, I've had a blast doing things like this for my own game. So when I heard in Among Us that there was some strange audio in various rooms in the game, I of course had to check it out. Mind you, I heard about this a few months ago, I just sort of got really busy launching my own game. So I'm just now sitting down to tackle it. Anyways, we'll be hopping around the three maps to document some different things. Voices can be heard in certain areas, and buzzing tones can be heard in others. If we take a crowbar and crack open Among Us like the burglars that we are, we'll actually be able to find the three instance audio files in the directory. We have ambcoms0.wave, ambcoms.wave, and ambcomsroom.wave. All three of these files are utilized within the game's engine Unity across the different maps, and they have perplexed players since they first heard them. So let's do this file by file. We'll kick it off with ambcom0 and head over to the office area in Mirror HQ. This sound file is honestly a throwback to a lot of us who grew up in the 90s and 2000s. Since all the sounds within the audio file are sourced from phone-related tones that not all people nowadays may recognize. It's about 20 seconds long, and the most notable sections within the audio is the terrifying dial-up connection tone and the disconnect tone. This is the dial-up tone within the file. When I was a kid, the internet took over the phone connection to our house. That's the only way you could access the web. And if you picked up the phone during this time, you'd hear this creepy robotic tone. And it also made this noise while connecting to the web. Cell phones weren't really a common thing yet, so you'd have to disconnect from the web to make a phone call, or to even receive a phone call at your house unless you had a second phone line. The other tone that plays in this audio file is the out of service tone for Europe. This three-tiered sound would play if you call a number that was no longer in service. This whole audio file is at least interesting from a mystery perspective, but the throwbacks to these iconic sounds are pretty cool. Moving on to AMB comms, we have some audio in English that is a bit hard to make out. We're able to encounter this audio in game by heading to the comms room on the Polis map. The soundbite is an exchange between three individuals, and I'll play this audio in its entirety. I've gone ahead and cleaned up the audio and removed some of the garbled tone so it's a bit clearer. This is an exchange between three people, what sounds to be a female and then two males. Based off the nature of this call, it honestly sounds like a dispatcher call for police, or two individuals reporting new findings to a dispatcher or correspondent. I'm thinking the game devs probably yanked this from some sort of police, military, or space-focused radio clip, muddied it up, and stuck in the game as background noise. At the beginning of the audio, I can almost hear the words Task Force by the woman, and then the phrase is Number 30 Broad Street, 1022 by the first male, and the phrase Sergeant 1 on Central by the second male. Take a listen and let me know what you hear. To me, it sounds like a police radio reporting an incident since it sounds like a street address is referenced. Now, while this audio is pretty cool, and it's neat to try to figure out what this is, it's the last audio file that is truly the most perplexing, and one I've been having a rough time trying to solve. Within ambcomsroom.wave, there's two more exchanges of dialogue, by a female and a male. 
which sounds like a source from that same call that the previous audio file referenced. We can hear this audio by heading to the comms room on the Skeld or in Mirror HQ. However, within this call, amongst all the static and noise, is a series of tones that play as follows. Now upon hearing that, most of us immediately go, oh, that's Morse code. Not that all of us actually know how to decipher Morse code, but we recognize the tone. And this is exciting. Figuring out audio puzzles in series like Final Fantasy Freddy's, among other games, has trained me for this moment. So although we can hear the tones, it's much easier to see the tonal pattern through a spectral frequency display. It's clear as day that we're looking at Morse code here. We have short intervals and long intervals, and the combination of these tones attribute to letters and numbers. Now mind you, based off the amount of tones we're dealing with, this message is rather short. We have 25 tones in total, ranging from short to long. But the issue is that the individual letters can be up to four tones long per letter, with numbers being five tones. So we could be dealing with a message that is only five to six letters long or one that could possibly be around 10 to 15, depending on which letters are used. Unfortunately though, we run into a major issue. So Morse code isn't just an array of short beeps and long boops. It's based on timing as well. In fact, timing is absolutely crucial for decoding a message. Three tones in a short pause versus three tones in a long pause change everything. Spacing can determine whether you're adding tones to define a letter, adding a letter to a word, or beginning a new word. And without proper spacing and defined wait periods, your message can just become a garbled mess. The beginnings and endings of each section cannot be defined, and there's tons of different ways to look at the notes. For example, the Among Us hidden messages first four tones are short, long, short, short. We know letters have a max cap of four tones, but because we don't know when to sever those tones to define the letter, we're left with four possibilities. The first letter is either an E, A, L, or R. And whatever letter we choose means our starting point for the next letter is different. An E can be just a single short tone too, only consuming one single tone. So when we start multiplying out all the possible arrangements for the letters, without a timing signature, you're left with too many different possibilities to fathom. Ultimately, we don't know if this is spelling out an actual word or a code that is used for something else. You might even have to plug into a cipher, which makes this a nightmare. Now, there's three possible explanations for this. One, the developers unfortunately screwed up with this. Two, it has no meaning at all and was just a sound they sampled similar to the human audio. Or three, perhaps it does do something, either by entering it as a name or a private game code once the correct letters were determined. Part of me actually hopes it does have substance, because I absolutely love the thrill of trying to solve easter eggs and puzzles. I've had the opportunity to do this in my own game, and there's nothing more rewarding than watching players try to solve the secrets that you've carefully crafted as a mad scientist. Especially secrets that are designed so that a simple acid dump from a game won't yield the answer. Oh, those are the best kind. So from one developer to another, I hope that is the case. But I also understand if it isn't. Regardless, this Morse code message may be something we won't ever be able to solve. It will forever remain one of Among Us's most bizarre mysteries for many years to come. Unless you can solve it. And with that, thanks for watching guys and gals. And if you're looking for a new thrill, check out my free game Zardy's Maze in the description below. Cheers.